On this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect using the Power BI mobile app to your reporting services server over the internet using OAuth authentication. That's coming up. What's up guys, I'm Adam Saxon, AKA Guy in a Cube, and today I'm excited to show you how we can configure what's needed on your machines in order to use OAuth authentication with the Power BI mobile app. There are a couple things that we're gonna to have to step through in order to get this to work couple of assumptions I'm making at this point that you already have a server that's running ADFS and you have a machine that's using the web application proxy role in your environment. Both of those machines have to be Windows Server 2016 in order for this to work successfully. So make sure you've got that in your environment. The other thing is you're gonna need some certificates. In my case, I've got a wildcard certificate for gynacube.com that I'm using on the ADFS server and the web application proxy server and that is through a valid certificate authority. I've also got a certificate from my reporting services server itself. That's actually using the certificate authority in my domain, but I've made sure that both of those certificates are valid on my mobile device. You need to make sure that your mobile device is gonna like those certificates. If they're not from a trusted CA like VeriSign or something like that, you're gonna to need to make sure those certificates are installed on your mobile device in order for this to work successfully. Otherwise, you're gonna see some weird errors that are gonna be frustrating and it's gonna be hard to troubleshoot. So with that, let's go through and look at what we need to set up in order for this to work. So the first thing we have to do is set up some service principal names and set up some de delegation settings from a Kerberos perspective. This uses Kerberos constrained delegation from the web application server to the report server. So that stuff needs to be set up. So let's start with the report server itself. Let's go to my report server box. And I've already got reporting services configuration manager up. First thing we want to look at is what is the service account we're using? In this case, I've got guy in a cube slash RS service, which means I will need to configure some HTTP SPNs. If I was using something like network service or a local system, I'd be on the machine account and HTTP SPNs are covered by the host SPNs on the machine account itself. But in this case, I've got to create some SPNs. So let's go ahead and do that. We will open up PowerShell here. You can do this from any machine. You just need to make sure that you have domain admin rights as we're modifying attributes on a domain account itself. So. First thing I wanna do is look at, so we're gonna do dash L means that we're gonna do a list. So we're gonna list all the SPNs on that domain account. I can see that I already have some HTTP SPNs already, but they don't match what I would be putting into the URL of the browser. So when I go to report server in my browser, I'm gonna be using guy in a cube SQL slash reports because that's the machine that's being hosted on. It's just the machine name itself. And you'll see later in the configuration steps that I have, I use a backend URL that we're gonna to go to, and that's gonna be guy in a cube SQL slash reports as well. So we need to add the SPN for that. So dash A means we're gonna add, and we're entering in whatever we put in for the host name in the browser in the, for the URL. So in this case, it's guy in a cube SQL. This is the fully qualified domain name SPN that we're gonna add, and we're gonna put that on the RS service account. All right, that's good. The next thing I do, I always do this for any SPN I add, is I'm gonna add the NetBIOS name SPN as well. I do that just as a CYA in case the DNS has an issue of some kind or there's a blip in the network, and I just wanna make sure it's covered in case it ends up going to the NetBIOS SPN instead of the FQDN. So let's go and add that. So our SPNs are there, that's good. Before we move on to delegation settings, from an application perspective, I need to configure some stuff for report server itself. So for report server, I need to configure the authentication type with inside of the rsreportserver.config. So we'll go browse to that. And I need to modify this on my desktop. We'll come down to authentication types. By default, you're probably just gonna have RS Windows NTLM. We need to add two things here. We need to add RS Windows Negotiate. So Negotiate's the protocol that says, hey, we're gonna try and see if we can go curb. If there's an SPN, I go curb. If there's not, I go NTLM. That's kind of the normal one that you use in your browsers. The other one is Windows Kerberos. And so this specifically says, if you come in specifically asking for the Kerberos protocol, we're gonna use it. And from the web application proxy perspective, it's gonna need the Kerberos one. The negotiate's just there in case you have other services that you're gonna use. All right, we can save that, copy it into my report server directory. 
Yep. And then stop and start the service. Make sure it takes in those settings. That's done. We are done with the report server itself. That's all the configuration we need. If by chance you haven't set up SSL, you're going to want to do that. You can do that by going to the report portal part and you can add an SPN uh, or sorry, you can add your certificate for the HTTPS piece itself. I've already done that. You can also do that from the web service perspective and I've already done that here. So, and you just choose the certificate that you want to use. So in this case, I've used uh, my wildcard cert itself. So now we need to configure delegation settings from the web application proxy server to report server itself. To do that, we're going to go over to our domain controller. We're going to go to the uh, computer accounts that are there because I have to do this on the machine account. So let's go to guy in a cube WAP. And when we do that, I have a delegation tab here. If you don't see a delegation tab, you should see a delegation tab on the server on a machine account because there's always going to be an SPN there. If for some reason on a service account you don't see a delegation tab, that means there's no SPN. So just FYI. So in this case, we need to configure protocol transitioning to with constrained delegation. So constrained delegation is this third uh, radio dial option. To get protocol transitioning, we need to choose that second underneath. And then we need to add the services. We need to explicitly say what services can we delegate to when we're using constraint delegation. So in this case, I want to go to add. We're going to type in the service account that we added those SPNs on for report server. So that's RS service. And then we'll see a bunch of SPNs here. The one we're interested in is Guy Cube SQL because that's the one we're going to. Also, you only see the NetBIOS name here for the computer account, not the fully qualified domain name. Don't worry, it's going to pick both of them. We'll go ahead and hit OK. You can validate that both of them are there by clicking on expanded. You'll see both of them there. We're good. We can go ahead and hit OK. We're done with the delegation settings. We're done with the Kerberos settings. So now all that's left is we need to set up ADFS and we need to set up the web application proxy. Let's go over to our ADFS server. We've got some updates. We'll go ahead and dismiss that. I am in the ADFS panel itself. And from here, I want to create an application group itself. So we'll do add application group. We're going to call it port server. We're going to choose native application access, accessing a web API. Go ahead and hit next. For the client identifier, I've got a cheat sheet here. We're going to pick the specific GUID that's used for the mobile app. This is in the documentation, so you can go and grab all of this. All the PowerShell scripts, all the items I'm adding here are in the actual documentation that I'll link down below. So you can go copy and paste those if you need to. So we'll go ahead and add that. We need to add the redirect URLs. So let me grab these each individually. The first four of these are used for iOS devices. The last one's used for Android devices. Okay, we can hit next. So now we need to give the redirect URL for our report server itself. So in this case, it's going to be, this is the public URL. This is case sensitive. So you need to make sure that whatever URL you put here, that's the URL you end up putting into the mobile app itself. Otherwise it won't get it correctly. So we'll go ahead and hit add, then we can hit next. We're gonna permit everyone in my case, for your instance and your organization, you may wanna choose a different option here. That's up to you. And then I'll hit next. We're good. We can uncheck open ID. We don't need that down below and then hit next and then next again and close. We have our application group on our ADFS server. That's all the configuration we need to do on the ADFS server itself. Now we're going to go over to the web application proxy server. We have a few options in how we want to do this. You could do this, the initial step through the GUI and actually walk through the wizard, enter in your information and publish the web application proxy application. But the second part we're going to have to do from a PowerShell perspective. So for both, I'm just going to do PowerShell and I'll walk you through what we need to do. Let's go back to my cheat sheet on where I have those commands so we can see those. And the first part we're going to do here is this add web application proxy application. You can give it a name, call it whatever you want. External pre-authentication has to be ADFS. The external URL is going to match the URL that we did in our application group in ADFS. So let's go back and I'll show you that part. So with inside of our application group, we go to properties and you'll see the report server web API. And if we go to this, that's the URL that we did inside of our application group. The other thing you're going to need to know is this name here. That's going to be the actual name we reference in the PowerShell script as well. 
we set our external certificate thumbprint to the certificate that we're using for that URL, and that is my wildcard cert for guyonacube.com. We set the backend server URL. That's going to be the URL that we do internally to the report server. The ADFS relaying party name is that name I showed you in the application group already. And then the backend server authentication SPN is going to be the SPN that we use for the internal backend server URL to communicate over Kerberos. The last thing we're going to do is set up use OAuth authentication. So let's go ahead and grab that and we'll go ahead and run that on the web application proxy server. And that ran successfully. The next part that we need to do is we need to add, we need to set up one of the uh, settings for the web application proxy application. We need to set backend server authentication mode to integrated Windows authentication. To do that, we need to get the ID of the application of the application that we just created. So we'll go ahead and do that with the get web application proxy application. And then ID is going to be this number here. Copy that into our command. And then we're going to set that application with that ID to use integrated Windows authentication. All right. And then if we run that get command again, we will see that we're now using integrated Windows authentication. And you'll see all the other settings that we passed in. At this point, we've done. This should allow everything to work through the mobile application, assuming we have an external DNS entry for that URL, and assuming all of your certificates are set up on the phone. So let's jump to my phone and we'll see how that works. Okay, on the phone, we're gonna go ahead and launch the Power BI web app. And let me go ahead and uh, get the URL set in. So I've got the URL for my report server. That's an external URL. This is the URL we use to configure the ADFS and WAP server. And that is reports.guyanacube.com slash reports. So we'll do a connect. And if everything works right, we should see the ADFS login page. There we go. So now we're seeing the ADFS login page from my internal environment going across the internet. So let me add in my user credentials. So I've got my user credentials added in there. We'll go ahead and log in. And then it should come up everything. Well, assuming I typed in the password right. All right, let's try that again. It's connecting. And boom, we are into my report server in my local environment from across the internet with the Power BI mobile app. Okay, were you able to successfully configure this in your own environment? Let me know if you have any questions about it. Go and leave that down below in the comments section. And I'll have links to the documentation down in the description below as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.